If you are justice, please do not lie. For what is the price of your blind eye? Hello, everyone. Everyone, my name is Jaden, and today we are taking another spoiler-filled look at the Batman, the newest film in the Batman saga, directed by Matt Reeves. So before we get into that, because there, I've caught quite a bit to say, I have finally made up my mind on the last, like. Recently, there's the debate between Marvel vs. DC with No Way Home and The Batman. I saw them both in the same day, because I just like, spent the day at the movies, but I saw them both in the same day, and that kind of solidified my opinion, where, from a filmmaking standpoint, DC has a significantly better films. The best of the best of DC. I'm talking about, like, as much as I'm not the biggest fan of them, the Dark Knight trilogy, this, the Batman, Joker, like, I, I don't know, but those are kind of the all-stars, and they are, from a technical standpoint, significantly better than the entire MCU. I would say that the Dark Knight is technically better than all of the MCU, probably technically better than the Batman. I just can't find that much enjoyment out of it, as it doesn't really mean much to me, but then, um... Like, Batman Begins is, I'd probably place it, I'd say from a technical standpoint, it is worse than Infinity War. And it's better than No Way Home, worse than Infinity okay. But, yeah, I saw it in the same day, and it is not, the thing is that they're two completely different things. But the best of DC is significantly better than all of Marvel. Not the DCEU, because DCEU, none of that's better than Marvel. Like better than the best of Marvel. But like, the best, uh, Marvel has the overall superior collection, whereas DC has the superior standalones, even though some of them are trilogies. But yeah, that's, that's my opinion on the MCU versus DC. And it's quite difficult because everything, people were complaining about how it's all reboots and sequels, but with The Flash coming out and No Way Home and Doctor Strange, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be reboots and sequels. Everything's going to be a multiverse. People are already complaining about how everything's interconnected. How about you connect stuff that wasn't connected before? Because, you know, money. I mean, fan nostalgia. That, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's it. That's my opinion on that. Just wanted to get that out of the way. So let's, uh, let's get into the Batman. So I want to start with the cons. Bam. Cons. So, my my biggest issue that I said was, um, I said in the uh, original review was that the film, I do believe, is too in over its head in the last act. So basically, uh, it's, this part is in my mix, but I did state that the film has a four-act structure. I'm going to get more into that in the mix. But the four-act structure, the second half, is does not complement the first one that well. Like, it isn't bad. None of the film is awful or bad. It's just, it's a significant downgrade from it. It just, it kind of loosens it up. And, it, the like, the, when they arrest the Riddler and stuff, it just, it doesn't, it, Paul Dano, I love Paul Dano. He was great in There Will Be Blood, uh, Little Miss Sunshine, and this, for the most part, but they kind of just treat him as a, like, almost as a joke, where he's like, Twitch streaming, thank you guys so much for all your help and 500 followers, it's really mean a lot for you following me on this journey. It kind of just takes away the edge, and then when you see him without the mask, I can't, Paul Dano is a great actor, don't get me wrong, but I, the interrogation scene, it's just, it feels a little too silly considering the first half. Because the first half of this film is almost perfect. It has the monologues, it has some great action. I feel like right after the Batmobile chase is when the film starts to go down. But, yeah. Um, the, it, like, it's, 
He, Batman stops a mass shooting, which... Okay, the reason why I say that is because the film, the climax already happened. The Riddler's already arrested, but he still had a secret plan that wasn't set up until right then. And so, I, yeah, it, it just didn't flow that well, in my opinion. And then, um, right after that, okay, the, the forced emotional pull with Alfred. Um, I'm presuming that I meant when Alfred gets blown up by the bomb. So, Alfred gets sidelined significantly. And he becomes this person that, like, uh, he just, he becomes, he becomes like a, not like an equal to Bruce Wayne, like a trainer or something, but then he just, he gets a bomb that was meant for Bruce Wayne, and then he doesn't die, but he's hospitalized for the rest of the film. He gets turned into Halloween 2, Jamie Lee Curtis, but just doesn't get to do anything. I'm presuming Matt Reeves forgot he was a character, and was just like, oh shoot, now we don't have to worry about him. I thought he died. Uh, yeah, but there's just, they did the whole Spider-Man, you're not my father thing, and that, it wasn't as bad as everyone, like, people who don't like that aspect, it's just, yeah, but, it, Alfred, he's also significantly younger, he's played by Andy Serkis, no, yeah, was he played by Andy Serkis? Uh, he was, yeah, he was played by, where the hell is it, Andy Serkis. I think that, and I, he could be played by Jude Law the same amount, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, that, the Alfred is just, he gets blown up by bomb, and then he get he's, he's not dead, he just goes, blah, and then he just is very secretive with Bruce Wayne, but it's very difficult, their relationship, that, oh, then there's the Riddler, then the Riddler is the Joker, so, my biggest issue with that is that the film wanted to be more, like, okay, when I say got to an over its head, when the Riddler, he starts laughing uncontrollably. What? Why? What? I thought, we're Riddler, not Joker. Riddler's supposed to be the Zodiac Killer. He's supposed to be, like, okay, I don't mean to sound like that guy, but... He's just, considering, yeah, team Edward, uh, considering all the stuff that's happening, he shouldn't be this, just, like, insane, because he was an orphan and stuff, but, like, the laughing, I feel like, just drove it in too much, and then it just felt too jokery, because you can't, it doesn't matter what they try, every Batman villain at one point becomes the Joker, the Riddler just becomes obsessed with Bruce Wayne, and it gets really... It, it, the film gets too comfortable with your suspension of disbelief, and it starts to mix character aspects from stuff that doesn't need to be there. The interrogation scene is... Uh, some forced dialogue. The screenplay does get a little eh at some points, but especially between um, Batman and Catwoman. Uh, a, for some reason, a lot of Catwoman's lines don't flow well for me. They just they seem like... Like, specifically the, I got nine of them. It just, it doesn't work that well. Falcone, I don't know, like, I didn't know that was a character. <laughs> I, but once again, I'm not that big of a Batman fan. I mean, I really enjoy this film, but, okay, yeah. The inclusion of the Joker at the end, or alluding to the Joker, I didn't like it. They, they really wanted there to be, like, they're saying that Barry Kogan or Keegan or however the hell you pronounce his last name, they're trying to do something that they just can't. And the Joker, I feel like, not yet. They should do what they did in Dark Knight. But Dark, the Batman Begins was very subtle about it. They did the card. It was like... It was basically the post credit scene, but like a really good ending to Batman Begins. That I'll have to, I have to give Batman Begins that. This one, it felt forced. Like, once again, the last half of this movie is just... It's very messy compared to the first half. Um, I, yeah. Uh, then the Penguin is very comedic. 
and like he's comic relief in this film. I didn't really like that. That there, I don't know how to elaborate. I've only seen the film once. Sideline characters. The Riddler is partially sidelined for the middle, for a good chunk. There's like he's the biggest part of the first two, and then for the last part, he, he like he gets in Act Three. He gets ignored, and then Act Four, he's the main focus again. So once again, very messy. Catwoman. Catwoman, I feel like could have done more because she's just the the romance aspect didn't really it, it didn't work until the end where they drive away because that was very bittersweet, but like she wasn't as much of a character as much as a love interest, and I like how it wasn't badass girl beat up Bruce Wayne. It was she's a character. They didn't use that correctly, in my opinion. I'm not, I don't know. Alfred, I already talked about him. Barry Keegan, I already talked about him. Unnecessary comedy. I'm not talking about the quips between Commissioner Gordon and Batman. I'm talking about Penguin being handcuffed and being like, I'm still right here. I, he, the makeup kind of looks like Joe Pesci in Home Alone. Okay, those are my cons. Let's get to the mixed. Okay, so... So the four-act narrative structure, this is where I'm going to elaborate a little bit. The first act, which is, I think, all the way to the funeral, is a, it's tone establishment and reintroduction to the Batman, where it, they do a fake-out at the beginning, which I kind of like, with the Ave Maria, where they kind of pretend to show Bruce Wayne's parents' deaths, but it's not. It's uh, the Riddler's first victims. I do like that. A tone establishment... It's establishing the grit and grime. They do this thing. Actually, I'm going to do it up later. Then the second act is the Bat and the Cat and the Penguin, and that's where Catwoman's arc starts to play in, and Bruce Wayne and Catwoman get closer. And then the Penguin starts. That's when the Penguin becomes like a really big character, and I think that's, that, that's where the Batmobile comes in. And then Act 3, the Falcone plot line, and then the Wayne's political issues. The Wayne, the Wayne exploration, I feel was done very mediocrely compared to how they did in Joker. In Joker, they just flat out, not said, but they flat out made the Waynes look like douches. Where in this film, there's like, they did bad stuff, but he's still kind of good. No, it's like, I don't know, the philanthropy, and the, they talk about like the mixed philanthropy and how there's all politically corrupt. Then the Falcone plot line, I find it felt for us. And then Act 4 is the Riddler's main plot. After the Ridley gets arrested, that would be the logical conclusion to, if this was like a, if this was like a 80s superhero film, 90s, that would be where the movie was ending. But no, it went on for just a little too long. Uh, I do overall like the last ending, but yeah. Uh, Alfred, once again... The morale of Batman, I can't understand it because his arc only shows up at the end where it shows that this brooding force isn't there. Where he, No, not that, that. That his brooding force is sh showing vile and gruesome like brutality instead of a symbol of hope, which, yeah, they're very loud about that symbol of hope near the end. But someone flat out says, I'm vengeance, and showing that he's the inspiration. It just doesn't work. Speaking of which, here's some pictures of me with eyeliner, because why not? This shit's about to go viral. Yeah. 
uh, the interrogation scene and the Batman saves the day. Yeah, it's just the final bat the battle is really cool, but then the explosion stuff where Batman doesn't have any reaction to it. It's just I don't suspending of disbelief, especially when they're trying to make it as realistic as possible. It's not as grounded as the Nolan films, but the Nolans still have more fantasy aspects and the motorcycle, the Batmobile. Yeah. Then the romance, I don't really like that much. I mean, it is very forced. It should be more of a partnership platonic compared to them kissing, which is... Then the set design, I do have to admit, I will get into that in just a little bit, is really good, except for Wayne Manor, because it is stunning. That's the issue. It looks like Hogwarts. I don't know why, it just aspires all of it yeah, it just it doesn't work well. Also, my mix is Bruce Wayne's persona isn't there. Wayne Enterprises is ignored, and it's more of a good cop, bad cop. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, it just it doesn't work in the sense that like Wayne Manor. I can't like the locations. I don't know if I I was paying attention, but I don't like I couldn't tell you where Wayne Manor was compared to where Wayne Enterprises is. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. Let's get to the pros. Okay, so here are the technical pros. It's gorgeous cinematography. The sound design is absolutely amazing. It is really loud and bombastic when it needs to be, but also really quiet. Uh, framing and color is really good. The way some shots are framed, it has like specifically stuff with the camera out where there's like fog around the lens, or there's like uh, just the focus is off. It just it really works for me. The editing is jarring when it needs to be, and they do specific things where they let shots hang on for a long time with Robert Pattinson walking out of a hallway. It is really creepy. It is really well done. I like the way it looks, and it just, it's ideal, in my opinion. Um, then, makeup, the penguin. Uh, I do like Bruce Wayne's eyeliner. I know that's not, once again, eyeliner. But, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I know people don't like it, how it's emo Bruce Wayne. But, like, it works for this character. And then my favorite part about this whole movie is Michael Giacchino's score. I am, I love Michael Giacchino. He did Space Mountain, which is probably my favorite song ever, like favorite score of anything ever. Uh, it has the bam, 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 that just really fits in. And then the last, the credits, 12 minutes, is called Sonata in Darkness. And I stayed for the credits because I knew there was a post credit scene, but I wanted to see if there's anything there. But they're just sitting there watching the red text go down, or up, or whatever, and listening to this gorgeous piano music. Yeah. Okay, so the thing with the score is that the Batman theme, I do think, is a little overused in some action aspects, but it's three hours, and it didn't bother me that much, because it's such a good theme. Now, this is a score, but there's also a soundtrack. Nirvana and Ave Maria. And this movie got me to like Nirvana, I'll say that. Um, pacing, this film is wonderfully paced. Even in the last act where it's a little slower compared to the first one, it, the three hours, it feels like three hours, but that's a good thing. It's, you're letting it all fold out. You're following it along. Um, all of it is just, ah, yeah. It's like, you're just, you feel along for the ride. Because this is a Batman story. We're not worrying about Bruce Wayne. We're not, we're not there yet. He's getting into Batman. He's this reclusive, sol solitude guy that is only Batman. And he sinks. And he's just waiting to be the Batman. Because the signal is, yeah, okay, that's... The performances, Robert Pattinson as Batman is great. He does a great job with Bruce Wayne not being the philanthropy, not being that playboy yet. But just being 
like he you can tell what he's thinking with the face especially the funeral scene that's probably one of my favorite scenes that he's been in excluding good time because that's immaculate zoe kravitz's catwoman is really good paul dano he's good in the first half and then the second half i feel like he just gets a little too unhinged into joker-esque and then jeffrey wright as commissioner gordon did a good job but you know it's commissioner gordon he's he's like a He's at Batman's side. He, it, I like their relationship a lot. Uh, it really works so well. The, the social commentary is good until the last part. Until the mayor is talking about it. And, like, they flat out said, just like, can everyone just pay attention to me for a second? And then, does everyone remain calm? There's a flood in Gotham City. Are you kidding me? It's really dumb. Uh, the violence in the MPAA rating. So the film is PG-13. And the violence does play into that at some points, where, like, it's not, there's not enough blood. But Batman doesn't kill people. He just hurts them, goes, I'm vengeance, and then runs away. Yeah. Speaking of which, Batman running, I do like how he doesn't disappear, because, once again, this is year two. We're not there yet. Uh, something I forgot to mention in the performance. There are monologues where Bruce Wayne talks about what's going on. I really like that aspect because it works a lot. Um, something I didn't like that I forgot to mention in the pros, I forgot to write it down, is that they kind of waste their PG-13 F-bomb 20 minutes in for happy effing Halloween. That didn't work at that well for me, in my opinion. Um, the Edge to the Portrayal of the Waynes. It was be done a little bit better in Joker, but it was still fine here. The Riddler is petrifying in the first scene, and before he becomes a Twitch streamer, I find him intimidating and probably some of the best portrayal of a Batman villain under uh, the two Jokers. Uh, he's great. And then the mystery and puzzles, the riddles are not too far to figure out. They're not too outstretched like in the 66. Uh, Scott Kramer I'll put it in the description below. But Scott Kramer made a great video on the 1966 and like how the riddles are ridiculous and oh, I never get that. Whereas in this one, once you hear it, it's only Bruce Wayne. Smart Bruce Wayne. Batman, it's a genius in this one. Play, playboy, genius, billionaire, vengeance. Uh, minus the Playboy. It works a lot. This film... It's tension-filled like hell. Though you already kind of know the structure of Batman film, they kind of put in the trailers with Riddler getting arrested, you know that there's going to be the Batmobile and stuff. Whew. This works really well. So, it like, once again, the first half, I say it's almost perfect because I was on the edge of my seat almost the whole time, literally. I was intrigued, I was engaged, all of it. I was just waiting to see what happens next. Um, also, cinematography, when Robert Pattinson, or Bruce Wayne, is walking into Falcone's office, that works really well. And, yeah. So something I want to mention that I did not write down is that the difference between Bruce Wayne and Batman is not, is pretty much non-existent. He is only Batman at this point in the story. But I feel... Like, the way that you separate it here is the public's perception of Bruce Wayne and Batman, where everyone is petrified of Batman. He's this brooding force. He's the monster under your bed, the monster in the shadows that creeps towards you. Like, uh, when the, the, there's an opening montage and everyone's talking about where everyone's scared of him. Like, um, you see, like, he's in the shadows and then he's walking out and he's just, you can feel feel it, the clunking of the boots, all of it just works. Whereas Bruce Wayne, nobody's intimidated by him, but like everyone, except for the people below, are like, everyone is like, hey, Mr. Wayne! I feel like the way that they separate that divide works really well, in my opinion, because it is not a character divide, it's more of a social perception divide. And then, let me just talk about my favorite scenes. The opening kill, the way they shoot it, once again, it's terrifying. The Riddler, it's almost, like, it's one of those things where, like, uh, okay, 
Oh, oh yeah! It's, you're ready for it. The club fight is great. The funeral scene is the best scene in the film. Uh, it's terrifying. Edge of my seat. You know how it is. It's Batman being Batman and stuff. And then the penguin car chase at the Batmobile. But that introduction is some of the best. It's... I don't think I've ever been more engaged in a car chase. I don't care for the Fast and Furious films. But damn! It, this movie, it was awesome. Um, Alfred and the Bomb, I do like the way the scene played out, but I don't like narratively where it was placed. But the scene alone is good. And then Batman vs. the Riddler's Henchman, once again, doesn't work that well, but like Batman and the Rafters, the don't fight was cool, for the most part, if you take the action alone. But yeah, that's it. That's my spoiler view of the Batman. Uh, Team Edward, Robert Pattinson, is my favorite. He's probably one of my favorite actors. Up there with some of my favorite actors, including Willem Dafoe, Andrew Garfield, Ryan Gosling, all up there, Joaquin Phoenix, he's, yeah, yeah, you know the drill. But yeah, that, he's up there, and uh, his, he's after Twilight, which he is the best part of it, honestly. Uh, so one of, but like, after Twilight, uh, the films, I think like right when he went, got into A24, his acting career got really good. Uh, yeah. So that said, if you don't know my rating system, a 8 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10 is a golden ticket, and the 9.5 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 is a trophy. I'm going to be giving the Batman a 9 out of 10. I don't think it, it... The second half just marks off a whole entire point because it just doesn't work that well for me. But it is still a great film. One of the best comic book films of all time. My personal favorite. Uh, but yeah, it reigns supreme currently. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay golden, everyone. I'm Something in the way.